expenses. Read and consider it carefully before investing. Risk includes possible loss of principal. And Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel met at the White House in these last hours. What did they accomplish? What can they accomplish going forward? Torah Institute Professor Ann Bayevsky, also with Human Rights Voices, joins the show. And this has never been a warm relationship. They disagreed on the nuclear deal with Iran. Is there any room here for compromise between these two men? You see, I think the whole conversation about the two men and their personalities and whether they get along is really beside the point. It's a decoy on the administration's part. The problem is policy. I mean, Barney the purple dinosaur could be prime minister of Israel and it wouldn't make any difference. (laughs) Now, you had a column in National Review where you talked about the Palestinian narrative. And I think the essential argument there was that President Obama simply doesn't Uh, believe Israel's point of view, that he takes what the Palestinians say, lock, stock, and barrel, and that's why the two men can't agree on policy. Well, the the, the, uh, president has chosen systematically Iran, Turkey, Russia. He was the one who sent uh, an ambassador to Syria over the, the democratic state of Israel. But the real point is that we have a situation where, on the one hand, you've got billions going to Iran, genocidal terrorist sponsoring state. And on the other hand, the, prime, the president says the problem is he was insulted by uh, an aide to, to Prime Minister Netanyahu, when the problem is policy. And that's where the focus of attention ought to be. And so where we are now is the president has just announced that negotiations are irrelevant. That's the Palestinian line. They don't want to negotiate because that would mean recognition of the other, the Jewish state. And Israel says... They need negotiations in order to to have that sense of legitimacy. And when so where are we going in the next year or so? It looks like we're going to the United Nations, because after all, the president preferred the Security Council over the Congress on the most important uh, national security deal in a decade. So President Obama is, is putting Netanyahu in a very difficult place, essentially taking the Palestinian side. Now, when you say go to the United Nations, and what could the United Nations possibly do to mediate between the two sides? They have no intention of mediating. They have intention of imposing their will, the will of the majority, which is clearly is anti-Israel at the United Nations, on Israel. They don't want negotiations. They've got the idea of UN right answers. And all the president has to do is stand back and not exercise his veto. That's the worry, holding the lack of a veto over Israel like a sort of Damocles for the next year. Can Netanyahu just wait it out until President Obama is out of the White House and hopefully there's someone who's a bit more pro-democracy, pro-Israel sitting in the Oval Office? He can try, but in the meantime, Iran is wreaking havoc and the, the president is going to try to push the envelope by, as I say, going to the U.N., letting them play bad cop, pretending it's got nothing to do with him, and hoping that the Democrats win Jewish votes despite the absolutely horrific record of the last eight years. So it's not about personality with these two men. It's about policy. policy and we need to watch the U.N. Absolutely. Okay. The Torah Institute, Sam Bayevsky. Thanks for joining the show.